At a point when the world of mobile communication was crumbling around him, Lei Jun, the founder of Xiaomi, created one of the biggest mobile phone industries in the world. Although Apple might have initiated the smartphone revolution, Xiaomi still tops the chart when it comes to user-friendliness and affordability. But how was Lei Jun able to establish such a big business? This is the tale of a man who moved from owning zero assets to a multi-billion dollar investment. This is the story of strife, labor, and success. This is the insane story about Lei Jun and how he created and built Xiaomi from the ground up. Our story begins in 1969, when Lei Zhan was born in the Chinese city of Xi'an Tao. As a matter of fact, Lei's life was never easy. In his case, there is sufficient material for a book to be published in instances of pain and suffering. Growing up close to the industrial metropolis of Wuhan, he experienced difficult times for the majority of his childhood days. After the Cultural Revolution, teaching became a dishonored profession, and both his parents were teachers. His father earned $7 per month, and even at that, he still supported Lei's interest in electronics as a young boy. Right from his childhood, Lei enjoyed disassembling and reassembling radios, using two batteries, a bulb in his own self-made wooden box, some cables, and other materials, he created the first electric lamp in his community. Furthermore, he left Mian Yang Middle School in 1987 and enrolled at Wuhan University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in computer science in 1991. His primary goal was to use his education to serve the world after graduation. In fact, he was intrigued by Steve Jobs' work as an undergraduate and motivated by the co-founder of Apple. So he planned to launch his own company and finish college quickly so he could focus solely on it. This signaled the start of Lei's journey and a shift in the smartphone industry. Lei, who happens to be a great businessman, overcame challenges without faltering and accomplished feats that most people would find difficult. He soon started working for the Chinese software business Kingsoft after graduating. In 1992, he was employed there as an engineer. He quickly rose to the position of company CEO thanks to his competence and tenacity. And in 2007, he guided the business toward an IPO on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. In the course of his employment at Kingsoft, Lei established the online bookstore Joyo.com in 2000. And in 2004, he later sold the business to Amazon.com for 75 million US dollars. At the beginning of this decade, Lei also made investments in UC and YY, two profitable startup companies. He also managed a total of 70 investment rounds for his business. He finally left the software company after 16 years as CEO for safety reasons, and he later rejoined Kingsoft as vice chairman. After a few days, he made his investment in UC Web and VanCL.com public. Then Lei was appointed chairman of UC Web. As you may know, Alibaba currently has over 500 million active users that utilize the UC Web browser. Finally, Lei Jun thought of introducing a new mobile technology because he wanted a piece of the rapidly expanding smartphone market. He continued to follow his passion and finally established a company that would forever change the world of mobile technology. Xiaomi Corporation, a $50 billion firm with less than 10 years of operation, is listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The company's history is an interesting one, filled with many ups and downs. In 2010, Xiaomi was founded by ex-Kingsoft CEO Lei Jun. At that time, the smartphone industry was at a diminishing rate. Top manufacturers like Samsung and Apple were gaining market share as the sector consolidated. But all-time leaders like Nokia and BlackBerry were slipping into oblivion. However, within three years of its founding, Xiaomi went from a brand that no one had ever heard to becoming the biggest smartphone brand in China by 2013. At that time, everyone believed that the smartphone war was over. This business strives to deliver great quality at competitive prices, to provide more features and a better user interface than Android. MIUI was created. There are currently 291.6 million active users of the Xiaomi company. The business's strategy was frequently called 
copied. Xiaomi, meanwhile, asserts that it adheres to other standards. Even though he was already considered successful by society at the age of 40, he felt that he had not yet fulfilled his longtime goal of founding a Chinese corporation with international appeal and respect. He aimed to build a business that could compete with Sony and Apple, two well-known international companies. In order to compete in what was then the fastest growing market, he founded Xiaomi along with 13 other employees. Their first target market was the smartphone industry. Additionally, he was able to identify a challenge the sector faces that he can address. At that time, well-known companies like Apple and Samsung dominated the market. However, these companies now sell very expensive high-end phones. And at the other end of the spectrum, China has a large number of knockoff companies that sell cheap, subpar phones. Nobody was actually meeting market needs. Consequently, their plan was to produce a smartphone utilizing the same supplier and component that the major brands do, but selling it for much less money. But what's fascinating is that they started by building a potential customer base rather than by manufacturing the phone right away, since they knew that without the distribution network, the component supplier might not even want to supply Xiaomi. Chan, a billionaire from Hong Kong, generously funded Lei. Chan was in charge of Hang Long Properties, which supported Morningside Ventures and for many years had been a consistent investor in Lei's business. On August 16, 2010, Xiaomi formally unveiled MIUI, their Android-based operating system. Since Google is not officially available in the market, Android phones in China are not running the official Google Android operating system. And in 2010, the Android versions in China were not yet very well refined. So the team developed an operating system for Android phones in the market in China. Xiaomi developed MIUI, their own version of Android. From that user base, it gained millions of users within the first year, becoming an immediate hit. In August of 2011, Xiaomi released its first phone, the Xiaomi phone, exclusively online. Very impressive for a new business. Today, Xiaomi is a Chinese company that focuses primarily on the development of smartphones in addition to offering laptops, mobile apps, mobile accessories, wearables, home appliances, and smart home devices. But at first, MIUI ROM was exclusively developed by a software business using Google's Android operating system. Because the Mi 1 was favorably received, the second iteration of the smartphone had more advanced functions. Over time, the Mi UI became a big hit and has been adapted to other devices. In both English and Chinese, Mi UI can be downloaded and installed on more than 200 devices as of 2014. Even non-developers can quickly install Mi UI on their phones using the Mi UI Express APK. More than 30 million people worldwide were using Xiaomi's Mi UI as of the end of 2013. The Mi 2 phone was first unveiled in 2012, and a year later, the business announced that more than 10 million of them had been sold in less time. Hugo Barra was hired by the company in August of 2013 from Google, where he was vice president of product management for the Android platform. Barra concentrated on assisting Xiaomi's global expansion. Moreover, Xiaomi unveiled the Mi 3 at the end of 2013 and the company was ranked as the sixth most popular smartphone brand in China. The business eventually succeeded in snatching up the technological market in nations like the UK, Australia, and many others with the aid of Moba City. The business debuted its line of smart TVs in 2013. 2014 saw the announcement of an expansion outside of China, with Singapore as the initial destination. The business intended to join the Malaysian market within two months, an outstanding achievement for a small firm as Xiaomi was listed as the fourth largest mobile phone retailer in the world a year later. In 2016, Xiaomi unveiled the Mi 5 smartphone, and thanks to their collaboration, Xiaomi's mobile devices were formally made accessible in the European Union in September of the same year. The first Mi store in the EU debuted in Athens in 2017. A cooperation between Xiaomi and three telecommunications was announced in 2018 in order to sell smartphones in the UK, Denmark, Ireland, Austria, and Sweden. In the middle of 2019, the business unveiled the Xiaomi Mi 9 phone, which incorporates a fingerprint scanner on its display. 
Additionally, their phones have become the best-selling items on e-commerce sites like Taobao and JD.com. But as a result of its popularity, there is now increased competition as Chinese companies began imitating the Xiaomi strategy. In 2015, Xiaomi saw its first drop in sales as upstart companies like Oppo and Vivo took over the top spot. For Xiaomi, that was a crucial turning point that led to a return to the company's core competencies. Their emphasis is more on producing high-quality technology that is superior and innovative. Currently, among all Chinese IT companies, Xiaomi holds one of the highest numbers of patents on intellectual property. It is currently one of the top five mobile phone manufacturers. Today, Xiaomi has a strong presence in China, Malaysia, India, the Philippines, and Brazil, and has a family of 8,000 people and over $2 billion in annual revenue. At the time of making this video, Xiaomi has invested in 20 startups and has ambitions to support the expansion of more than 100 businesses. Rattan Tata, DST Global, Qualcomm Ventures, and Temasek Holdings are some of the well-known investors. In six investment rounds, Xiaomi has raised a total of $45 billion. In the end, Xiaomi's history is worth knowing because it's an intriguing one. But what do you think of their rise to prominence? What about their technology compared to others? We'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. See you in our next video.